Alright, so if you guys have been following the video so far, or if you've even looked at the timestamps, like, I'm sure most of you haven't because that's not like a normal thing to do, but um, you'll notice that out of the first, let's say, 50 videos, that the majority of the videos have come within a three to four week span. And I don't know, it, it'd be crazy for me to say, but honestly, I've been having to hold myself back and to slow myself down. Even though on, on a good day, I'll make three to four videos and I'm just trying to make as many videos as, as I can. Um, but I know, at least for me, it's important that at, for as much as I'm talking, I'm also doing. And so I wanna balance it by, by continuing to post workout videos. If you guys um, don't see a day where I, well, you, see, you see a day come where I don't post a workout video, it's because I didn't do a workout that day. Every time I do a workout, I, I make the commitment to myself to record it and to post it so that I, I can be as honest as possible with everyone watching. So for as many workout videos as there are, that's how many days I've worked out since the beginning of this channel. Um, one thing, like I just said, it's hard for me to contain myself and to not just say everything at once. I could just keep talking and talking and talking because I have so many ideas, but I, I, I feel like I'm restricting myself basically be, just because I want it and, and part of it is just because not like I'm worried, but I understand about perception and it could just be boring for people to only see me talking, sitting in this chair talking for so long. Um, really, I want you guys to see me doing and also hear me talking. Um, I just don't work out enough basically <laughs> at this point to, to, to make the balance work. Like I can't just post workout videos because in some workout videos, I'll just talk about my thoughts. Not so much about what the workout is doing or like what, what I'm doing in the workout and what's going on. At some point, hopefully I can increase my capacity basically to work out more and then I'll be able to record more thoughts over the workout video. But for now, I'm just re recording sitting down because I can. And as long as I'm able, I just, I'm just going to keep trying to do my best. So um, one thing I wanted to say is that basically in this journey of like kind of self-discovery and learning about life and stuff, I feel like God has taught me so many things. And it's getting to the point, I have the sense that if I don't say, if I don't start talking, then I might start, I might stop to learn. I might not learn as fast, you know, like God might like slow down what he's teaching me so that I can just take time to communicate it before I receive more stuff. One thing that I'm struggling with right now is I cannot seem to read the Book of Mormon or the scriptures for more than like 20 minutes at a time or 25 minutes because I've already read so much. And if, just to give some context in the mission, um, you're given an hour every morning to study personally on your own and what I used to do for the first six months of my mission at least maybe for the first eight or nine months is that I would um, wake up and um, maybe exercise but the first thing is that instead of eating breakfast I would read my scriptures in Spanish to practice the language and also to read um, scriptural content and so I would read for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour before personal study do my whole personal study and then throughout the day anytime i got the chance i'd read again and at night when we came back home from working and doing missionary work i would read more scriptures and so it, i would average like literally on an average i'd read at least for two hours every day if not three and some days i would like um because there's always times where you're tired and maybe like your companion just takes a nap or something and if there was any any kind of um lull where where my companion was sleeping a lot during the day i would not sleep and i would take that extra time to read scriptures i was that dedicated and so over the course of two years you can imagine that i put in a lot of hours of study and it's to the point where like i don't even know what to read besides the old testament um, which i haven't read completely but i've read like good chunks of it um i don't know what to read that i haven't already read and that's obviously with the exception of the old testament and so what God has t been telling me in my heart, and I've been like somewhat ignoring it, is that I just need to just need to speak. I just need to talk and get it all out. I need to say these things that I've been thinking about and holding in my head for the past year, and honestly years. Um, and so that is why, if you're wondering why there's so many of these random and like low quality unedited videos, I just need to get it out. And the the hope is that the more I talk, the more my mind, like uh, the gears in my head start turning more and I start to um, to finally gain more forward momentum because right now it feels like I'm kind of stuck. 
like I have so much in my head and I haven't done my, my due diligence of sharing it with everyone. And so maybe I'm not going to receive as much information as I would like to from God until I do this. And so this is me letting it all out. And so my biggest hang up right now with the scriptures is that I think we need to stop, like hit the emergency stop button. And I, I, as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we need to um, stop and examine and re-examine all of our beliefs. And we need to make sure that everything is in, in the right place. We need to do a check, um, like a cabin check, make sure every everyone and everything is in the right place. I think there's some things that we don't understand about our own doctrine that have been, that are dragging us down, or like or like kind of slowing us down. Um, the and the the biggest one on my mind right now, it's not like maybe not the biggest in importance or or relevance, but at least for me right now, the biggest in my mind is what we do not know about Adam and Eve. Um, I've been speculating for a while that maybe we don't understand the whole picture, and I, I've I've gathered a lot of evidence, and it just makes more sense the more I think about it, that we might have a false understanding of how everything happened. Not like that we don't know things that happen, we just don't understand chronologically the order of the events and also why they happened. I think we're a little bit confused about that. And that I think is, I would attribute, I'm not sure, I would attribute mostly to word of mouth and by tr due to tradition, how t classes are taught, parents teach their kids, all by word of mouth. And we don't always open the scriptures and examine them at length. At best, we'll open and read three or four verses at once before um, the teacher resumes to just say what they believe and their opinion. So if we trace back to the origins of the doctrine, if there was ever a misunderstanding at the, at the, at like the, the primary level, and then due to a misunderstanding and the communication by word of mouth, that, that misunderstanding was communicated over and over and over and over and over again, it could then lead to what I fear is a widespread uh, misconception about doctrine. So that's my that's my biggest fear right now. It's what's keeping me, um, keeping my headspace occupied, and I just want to get it out there so that anyone watching can do their own, um, basically their their own due diligence and go through and examine it. So, to just so that this can be an informational video, so I always like to share something about, and this is going to be about Adam and Eve. One thing I think is interesting is this concept that I believe is true is that in the Book of Mormon it says that Adam and Eve were in the garden without any intelligence, basically. Like they were very innocent and had a very basic level of knowledge and understanding. I think we have to assume, because Adam was created first and he lived for a little bit without Eve. Um, I think we have to assume that Adam was dumb as a rock. And because how could he be smart if he didn't have um, like challenges in his life to teach him? Um, God created all like the heavens and the earth, created man and then created um names for the animals and everything by asking adam what he would name them when when he created eve he asked or like it wasn't even she wasn't even eve at that point she wasn't named eve until after the fall um that's in the pearl of great price if you want to check on that that's like read moses and read abraham anyway so adam was asked what should he name his the the, the term was help meet basically a helper for him to his only his only life purpose was to maintain the garden of eden um, that was literally all that he was doing at that point due to his low level of intelligence. And so he looks at Eve and we have to assume he was dumb as a rock because he said, um, I'm going to call her woman. And if I had to guess, cause I don't know, but in like, in whatever ancient language, I'm sure that woman has to be translated as like being a derivative of, a, of like a sub category of man, like a derivative of man. Basically he looked at Eve and saw that she was, um, physically, um, inferior um, so he called her like, um, like a, a sub, like lesser part of a man. So a woman, um, and that's just because he was dumb as a rock. But as he gained intelligence and his eyes were opened due to having eaten the fruit that can, that helped contain knowledge of good and evil, he then named her Eve, the mother of all living, which is the translation. Um, anyway, I think it's interesting that before he gained intelligence, he subjected Eve who was just woman at that point, to basically be a lesser version of himself. He didn't have any love for her, is what I'm trying to say. And that was only due, due to not having intelligence in that state. And so if any good did come of eating the fruit, I would say one of it was that um, Adam gained enough intelligence and light to learn how to love and learn how to respect. Um, obviously he respected God due to God's power, 
but once he realized who, what Eve was and like the, the I guess the, the promise and the capability of the potential that she brought he was then able to love and respect her so I think that's something important that we acknowledge I don't know why but I think it's just it's important to focus on all the details and um yeah I think I'm gonna keep I'm gonna share more of these insights basically like there's there's things that are so specific in scriptures the way that they're the way the story goes or the way that the words and the phrases are written that give us insight but we choose not to see it because we we just like we don't uh, we don't pay attention to the little the fine details and so that's one of my goals is the more that I make these videos to go through and kind of like unveil what the scriptures really mean what they're really saying so hopefully this video falls to good ears of someone that's going to do something about what I'm saying. And hopefully we can make a change happen. And that is it for me. Signing off.